Um, hi everyone, my name is Jared. I'm one of the liaison officers here at the University of Canterbury and I'd like to, to welcome you to this session. What this session is about is that all the support um, services that are available here at Canterbury to help you with your, with your studies as you're going through because some students may have come from um, small high schools where actually in some cases this whole lecture theatre could fit your entire school into and in some cases this might be say the, the equivalent of your year 13 class. So when you come to university in a number of cases you, you sort of feel a little bit lost, you know, it's, it's a new environment sort of thing. So all these people here today are here to help you throughout your studies and it doesn't have to be in your first year at all. At any stage throughout your studies you can come and see these people. Now you also, there's a lot of presenters here and we're going to go through a lot of information but you don't have to remember it all. Okay, if the only thing that you remember at the end of the session is that you can always come to the help desk in the student services centre. Okay, and you can always come there and we'll always direct you to where you need to go. Okay, so without further ado, I shall hand you over to Jane Hall um, from the Mentoring Service. Jane? Right, good morning everyone. As you know, my name is Jane Hall and my role at the University is to coordinate a mentoring programme. The mentoring programme is a student-led programme, so we have students who train to be mentors um, and their job role is to support you and help you in the first few weeks and your first year at university. There is also a Maori mentoring programme and a Pacific mentoring programme and you'll hear more about that from our colleagues as we go through. Now, we have, anyone can have a mentor, um, it's completely free very very easy to register. We have some flyers outside that we'll tell you about and we're also mentioned in the student directory. I brought along today one of my mentors and this is Catherine and she's from the Women in Engineering group. Hi, I'm Catherine from Women in Engineering and um, we'll be mentoring female engineers um, for the mentoring program. If you want to come find out more about what we can offer you as a club as well, we'll be here after the session, just come find the girls in these t-shirts and also at clubs day we're between Von Haas building and the science block near the bike stands. Thank you, so that's for the women, but also we have lots of male mentors as well who are looking for mentees. Now, we also run as part of the mentoring program the Student Hub, which if you haven't seen it on campus yet, it is as part of the campus tours later on today, and it's located just opposite this building here. Um, it's a social learning space, you don't need an appointment to drop in, it's just come and use it as much as you would like to. It's an informal space, we've got access to um, tea and coffee making facilities, microwaves, you can bring food in there, you can meet friends in there and it's for you really to study, relax and use as you will. So that's a little bit about the mentoring program and the student hub, so thank you. <coughs> Great, thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to introduce Stephen Hart um, from the Student Support Services. Stephen. Hello everybody and um, thanks for that warm welcome. <laughs> thanks Stu. Um, yes, I'm Stephen Hart. I'm the Student Support Team Leader. And here's the team. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the type of support that we can assist you with. You'll see Jane down there. So she's part of my team. You'll notice that there's a college associated with each of the advisors on this particular slide. So this person is perhaps the best person for you to see in terms of your relationship with your college. So if you have some issues in your personal life, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in just a moment, the advisor on that screen is the, the best person for you to see. You don't have to see that particular person, but this person is familiar with the processes in your college and familiar with the people in your college. So what is it that we do? Pastoral care. So probably everything else except academic advice is what we can help you with. So we have a team of very experienced advisors that know what it is to be a student, know what it is to be uh, new to a place and know what it is to struggle with some of your personal things that affect your academic performance. So we do a lot of uh, first-hand information and also referrals and there's a few on the screen behind me of the people that we can refer you to. These are on campus of course. We also have referrals and networks into the community so if you have uh, wider um, issues there that are affecting you we have connections there as well. So we work very closely with these people and um, we're there to support you in all of these sorts of areas so any personal 
thing that's affecting your ability to study, we really hope that you come and see us. We really hope that you connect up with the mentoring program. Where are we? We're on the Student Services Centre, we're in Level 2. As Jared has already mentioned, your first port of call is a help desk on Level 1. So feel free to come and maybe ask a quick question, get a simple answer to that question. If you have a personal issue um, that requires some uh, privacy, we have a team of advisors upstairs and some officers that we can talk to you about that issue. Now there's a student services guide uh, over there on the door as you leave. If you haven't got one, please pick one up. We are on page nine of that guide and you can also check us out on our website. We hope you come and see us and uh, we look forward to helping you succeed at UC. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, now I'd like to introduce um, Ariana from the Māori development team. Ariana? Kia ora, my name's Ariana. Uh, no ma haramai ki te whare wānanga o Waitaha. Um, I work for the Māori Development Team. Oh, thank you. Oh, God, I had that photo. Uh, this is our team over here. We run the mentoring programme and, and the support services that Stephen talked about, but within the Māori um, framework. We provide academic support and mentoring. Um, we run quite a few events. And Anul, uh, my colleague in uh, Pacific Team, is modelling one of our fantastic T-shirts if you join the mentoring programme. Um, Carpino. Um, it's a very good idea to if, engage in the mentoring program. Um, it's an excellent way of talking about your subject to someone else, especially if you're here alone um, in your subject. You need some friends. The more you talk about your subject, the more you get involved in it, and it's the best way to get the most out of university. So the mentoring program is probably one of the best run programs in the university around support. Um, they know who to send you to, they have training, so um, if you get into any kind of trouble. So for our location, pardon, oh, okay put that back on. <laughs> uh, we're over in Island Road, so it's on the way to the, uh, opposite the Island Fields on the way to the hall, so um, that's our new location over there. Um, and that's pretty much, and I'll pass over to my colleague, Noor. Great. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Noor, and um, that's short for Fatima Noor. And uh, but my full name is Tungena Mwana Malai to Fingafia Me Fatima Noor Satelia. There you go. So that is true. That is my name, and uh, I, I've been the Pacific Mentoring Advisor now for the last uh, seven or odd years. You know, seven years. It is an amazing program that we recommend to uh, every single first year student. You know, not only the Pacific or the Māori program, but also the mainstream program because. It really is uh, important that you do have somebody that you can connect with uh, when the going does get tough. And trust me, it will get tough. And so having that person that you can just call on and, uh, and know will be there to support you, it's going to help you a great deal this year. Uh, as part of the Pacific uh, Development Team, uh, there are four of us on campus that are here uh, and we run various programs throughout the year. One of our most famous programs that you'll hear about is called Jandals which happens about three times a year. It's a social event for all of our Pacific students. You know, by the way, how many uh, Pacific in this room? Give me a wave. Whee! Okay, so there are like, hello. So there are like two, two types of people that I found out that live here uh, that, that are, attend the university. There are Pacific people, and then there are those that want to be Pacific people. All right, so uh, no, no, but the, um, the, we have these things called Jandals programs, and uh, they're designed to bring um, Pacific people uh, together uh, on campus, because we're like 400 people. Uh, last year, I think we had a total of about 400 in a university of, uh, I think it was somewhere between 15 to 18,000 so yeah so we need to come together uh, there's also past program we have a house for Pacific students uh, which was uh, available to you and so many other things that we can um, uh, support you in throughout this year. So I want to uh, encourage you guys and uh, to get involved in UC life, you know, totally involved. And, and to do that is to also get involved in the support programs that are here on campus. So we're here to help you. Uh, and like Adi said, uh, we're at 114 Island Road. All right. Thank you. 
great. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, just before I introduce the, the next guest, I thought I'd um, bring a couple of things up as well. That if you are looking to obtain parking permits, if any of you happen to have, have cars or so, those can be collected from um, the security office. Now that's for, for this week um, and part of next week. That's located in the ground floor of the registry building. Um, otherwise, it is located underneath the main library. Okay. What they can also do as well is that because it's an, it is an open campus and it is a safe campus, but you know, every now and then you're in a new environment and if, if you happen to feel unsafe at all at any stage or anything like that, you can actually contact security. So it is something that we recommend that you, you do put into your phones. And what they can arrange to do is they can, you know, if, if late at night, You've, you've stayed late, you've been in a lab, you've been in the library, and you'd actually like to be maybe walked out to your car or actually walk to your, your hall of residence, then security can do that for you. So it is something to, to take into account that, you know, we do want to make sure that all the students, you know, feel safe here on campus. Um, I'd now like to pass um, over to, to Nicola um, from Disability Resource Services. Nicola. Good morning, everyone. Here we go. The Disability Resource Service um, exists to help students with disabilities in their academic studies. Um, so we aim to level the playing field so that um, as a student with a disability you have access to learning as any other student would. Um, the process for registering with us um, is fairly straightforward. Um, we ask that you complete a, a form and provide us with some medical information about your disability. We then sit down with you, have a chat about um, how your disability might impact on your learning and we develop some support strategies and plans that are going to um, assist you. Um, people with a disability, a permanent disability can register with us and also those that have a temporary disability. So quite often around exam times we see people walking into our office with arms and slings, they've broken an arm, falling off a long board, um, or I have one interesting guy from engineering, they must have this bizarre arm wrestling ritual um, and his arm snapped right here in his arm. Everyone heard it and came running, but um, he said to me afterwards he'd looked it up on Google and found that he didn't quite have his arm positioned in the right place. But um, consequently, he couldn't write his, exam, his exams, so we had to provide him with a reader writer in that situation. So if you have the unfortunate experience um, of injuring yourself prior to an exam, can't write it, um, or you know something else crops up, please come and see us for that as well. Uh, the supports that we provide fall into three broad categories really, practical support, assistive technology and reasonable accommodations. So here's an example of some of the practical supports that we might use um, for students unable to take notes in lectures, um, it might be provision of uh, a note taker or the loan of a, a digital voice recorder to capture lectures. Uh, for deaf students, we've used New Zealand Sign Language interpreters, um, assistance to help with various tasks around research, lab work, library work, uh, word processing and providing um, printed materials in alternative formats. There's a, a, quite a large range of assistive technologies that are improving um, all the time that some students use. The likes of JAWS and MAGIC are often for blind students or people that have a vision impairment, so we can advise on those. Uh, we can give demonstrations of voice activated software where instead of typing you dictate um, through a little headset and microphone. Uh, text help, read and write gold is a well known um, software for students with learning difficulties. So we can talk to you about all of those and how they might be of help. The other main part of our work is reasonable adjustments in exam situations. So there are all sorts of scenarios that we can discuss with you that will help in those situations. Um, just to give you an idea of the, the range of disabilities we work with, um, I've mentioned temporary impairments. Um, we also work with students that have specific learning difficulties like dyslexia or dyspraxia, um, Asperger's syndrome, students with mental illness, mobility challenges, they may be in a wheelchair or incapacitated in, in some way and not able to um, get around campus easily. A range of medical conditions, blind and vision impaired students, deaf and hearing impaired as well. So 
So there's a lovely photo of our team. We're situated in level one of the James Height building. So underneath the main library um, level. So if you can get yourself to the security office that Jared referred to earlier, it's signposted from there. Okay, and we are listed in the student services directory, so if you'd like to get in contact with us, um, the details are there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as Nicola was mentioning, the, um, all the services that, that are being discussed today are mentioned in the, in the directory here as well, so that all their contact details are here. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to pass on to Alana from the Students Association. Um, Alana? Hi guys. Um, I'm from, actually I'm not, I've been working with the UCSA for the last two years um, and it's a student association, so we like to call ourselves the heart or the home of the students on campus. Um, it was started up in 1894 by a group of students for the students, so I'm guessing that the issues that they would have had back in, 19, in 1894 would have been where to park their horses and if they could, they wouldn't really have been talking about wireless and that kind of thing. Um, so we've got advocacy, um, we've got a student support team, um, a hardship fund, so if you're running extra extra low on money then we've got a team who can help you out with budgeting um, and we've also got a food bank. Um, student representation, we sit on all the committees um, and so from 1894 we kind of expanded so we'd like to think that we're sort of taking care of a lot of different issues that you guys will be um, needing. So if you want to come to us if you're in trouble um, and you're a little bit too embarrassed to tell your mum, a little bit too embarrassed to tell the police, um, if you're in trouble with the university, if you're in trouble with the police, I've already mentioned them, um, then we've got a team that can help you out. Um, so events, I'm not too sure whether anyone here went to toga party last night, um, but there was a few people running around in togas this morning. Um, <laughs> so we've got um, about two weeks worth of events for the next, um, just to get everyone involved and excited about university for the year. Um, I had a little, there's a little flyer that you'll see about UC orientation, so no doubt you'll find one of those and it's got lots of details in there, so how you can get involved and um, just have a really cool time. Um, also there's Clubs Day, which is on the 22nd and the 23rd of February, so that's next week. Really pay to get involved in those, as we've already um, seen the ladies from Women in Engineering will be there. So just have a walk around and any different kind of interest, actually anything that you're into, there'll probably be a club for it. Um, so just walk around, have a yarn to lots of different people. Um, and that's a really cool way to meet new people. Um, and obviously we've got an awesome uh, Facebook page. Some people have said it's the best Facebook page in New Zealand. So. You can check that out for yourselves. And um, I might be stretching the truth here, but there's a guy who pretty much sits on it full time, just typing ridiculous things. So if you want to see sort of monkeys riding bicycles and that kind of thing, have a look. I don't really know what it, um, how to explain it. Um, and yeah, so have a look at Cantor, that's the magazine. Um, and we're in the UCSL building. So I'm assuming that you're going to know where that is, and if you don't know, then you can go find it, because um, it's really easy to find. Go upstairs, and there's a really lovely team that can help you out there as well. I think I've said everything. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Alana. Alana, do you know when the um, second-hand book sale is on? Okay. So if you go onto the Facebook page, I mean, one of the things that, I, that I'll mention is that. Um, you know, you'll be starting to look at, at getting your textbooks. You don't have to get your textbooks straight away. Um, what you can do is that if you go over to the university bookshop, they do actually have lists over there of, um, of the books that you can get, um, of course, uh, what edition that you need to get, and then you might decide to maybe go online through Trade Me and actually look at buying things secondhand and, you know, saving yourself a, a bit of money. There's also a lot of notice boards around um, campus and students that, of course, no longer need their textbooks for first year are actually looking at selling them on. The only thing I do recommend is make sure you get the right edition. So if it says that you're doing Psych 105 or if you're doing um, Engineering 101, 
and the book says uh, you need, say, the, the sixth edition or the eighth edition, make sure that you're getting that one there so that, you know, when the lecturer or your tutor says we're going to be looking at the material on page 20, that it is the material that you, you need to, to look at. Um, but the, the university does run a second-hand book sale as well. Um, I think it is actually taking place, I heard, on the 4th of March or so, but do check the Facebook page um, for those details. Um, I'll now hand over to um, Joanna and Kate um, regarding um, Healthy Campus. Uh, actually, Janelle, sorry. Where's Janelle gone? Ah, okay, sorry. It is Joanna. Thanks, Stuart. Hi everyone, my name is Joanna Considine. I'm one of the career consultants for the university and I'm also a graduate of this university. Um, I've worked in career development now for nearly 10 years and for the last six years or coming up six years at the university. And I've heard a range of reasons and motivations as to why students come along to university. Anything from mum and dad thought it was a good idea for them to come to, they've come because their friends are here. But I'm interested to know today, how many of you come to university because you're hoping that it will increase your employment prospects? I wondered if I could have a show of hands. Okay, so I think I've got everyone in the room except for about one or two people who are in the category of hoping that their qualification indeed will improve their job prospects at the end. If that's the case, which it sounds like it is for many of you, I would be encouraging of you to access the Careers, Internships and Employment Service really as of day one, now that you're registered here at the university. How you can access this is through our UC Career Hub website um, and also through, of course, coming to see us. We're based over at Oakover, which is the big old house on University Drive. The reason why I say that you, you need to access us right from day one is that we deal with, on a daily basis, a range of employers, both locally, nationally and internationally, from a broad range of industries and areas. Um, some of those include engineering, law, commerce and business, um, the education sector, other companies in the private sector and also in the government sector. So a broad range of opportunities. A number of those employers have part-time opportunities, internships, work experience, which um, indeed is helpful, I guess, to, to know about for, for you guys. And we advertise those on UC Career Hub. So I'd encourage you to, um, to take up that opportunity to register and look at that information. We also run a range of careers, fairs and events. So coming up um, early March, on the 8th of March, we have a law recruitment evening. Um, on Wednesday the 16th of March, we have a um, accounting and finance fair. And also on the 12th and 13th of May this year, we run a general fair where day two is devoted to engineering employers and the first day covers all of it other disciplines. Great opportunities to be coming along and finding about summer work opportunities um, and internships and work experience, as well as learning more about what could be some graduate positions you might be interested in applying for the future. Just to support our student and graduate recruitment program and all those employment opportunities, we also run daily drop-ins, so if you'd like to get your CV checked or you'd like to talk to us about how to perform well at an interview, we can coach you in those areas. For some of you also, you may need um, a bit more course or career advice. Perhaps you're not sure where your degree might take you. Um, perhaps you're um, unsure whether you've started to embark on the right course of study at this time. Um, you're really welcome to come along to a career counselling session. Um, we encourage you to come to a drop-in first between 11 and 1, um, and then from there we can just assess what level of service you might need, um, and we can book you in for an hour-long career counselling session if you and I both agree that that would be the best sort of course of action from there. So I just encourage you to take up that if you need it. Um, we also run a range of seminars throughout the colleges and also in-house around all aspects of job search and careers. And we also have a range of resources to support our services, um, the vast bulk of which are up on Career Hub and our website. And also we have a great uh, careers resource room based at Oakover House. Um, we've got a great new flat screen TV, so we have um, all sorts of DVDs running with job search related um, things that you can be learning about while you're waiting to see see us, um, and indeed reading some other career related brochures and material. Each year or so we publish a guide to job hunting, 
and this is all up on our website, but you're also very welcome if you'd like to pick up your own copy to come over to Oakover. We update it each year, we um, work in with industry, so we make sure the material is current and relevant and um, assisting you in the aspects that you, you need to transition successfully into work. Just a final um, point, just briefly, is that just a tip from me, when it, when it comes to recruitment, the fact you've got a qualification with an employer will be a given. And so for an employer, not only are they looking at your qualification, but they're also looking at your level of skill development. And, and so opportunities such as you've heard about this morning, perhaps either being a, mentor, a mentoree at this stage or indeed in the future becoming uh, a mentor, um, certainly getting involved in UCSA clubs and activities, these are all great ways to be developing some of the skills that employers look for alongside uh, the skill development, of course, that will occur in your academic study. Just to wrap up, thank you, Jared. just to wrap up, um, these skills are actually just listed on a, a green flyer, which is just out on the table out there at the front, so if you'd like to have a closer look at them, you're welcome to, um, and there's also some tips there on how you can develop these skill areas. Just a final word, these skills are out of a survey done by Graduate Careers Australia. They surveyed around 350 uh, employers in the Australasian region of students and graduates. So these skills really are coming straight from the mouths perhaps of those future employers that you might be working for. So I'd encourage you to look at these and to look at how you can develop these skills. And just to finish up, that is Oakover House, which is, as I say, on University Drive. And that's my team, and we'd love to see you, so feel free to stop by. Thank you. Cheers, that's great. Thanks, Joanna. Um, if anyone has any questions about any of the support services that we, we mentioned today, um, please feel free to, to meet us outside afterwards and ask any questions, or of course, if you're unable to, to attend straight away, feel free to come back and, and have a chat to us later on. Um, now I'd like to introduce Janelle and Kate um, regarding the, the Healthy Campus process. Sir? Thanks. Hey guys, I'm Kate from the um, University Sport and Recreation Centre. Um, you may have seen us walking around campus giving out free passes and things like that. At the moment we're offering $99 membership, so that's a whole year's membership. Um, your membership gives you access to all our fitness classes, so if you want a Zumba body that includes Zumba. Um, we have weights and conditioning classes. It also gives you access to um, our squash and our boxing room. We have a weights room and an upstairs cardio area as well. We also organise um, social sports teams and subs are absolutely free. So if you organise a team, we're doing indoor netball, basketball, soccer and we're also introducing Turbo Touch this year. So you, if you organise a team and you sign up, subs are absolutely free and you, um, the, we organise the referees and the draw as well. Last thing I wanted to mention as well is today at the lunch, just outside here, um, we are organising an undie run. You don't have to run in your underwear, but we can provide underwear for you to wear over your clothes. It's only 99 metres. At the end, you rip off a pair of undies and it coincides with a certain price. So that could be a membership, free membership. It could be a Powerade, lots of other prizes, or concession cards for our classes as well. Um, and we are situated just on the other side of the river, uh, by the Island Oval. And I'm also here on behalf of the, oh, thanks, <laughs> part of the Health Centre. Um, so it's definitely a facility that you will take advantage of and you may, will definitely need throughout your university uh, lifespan. So the basic things, um, the accessibility, it's just situated behind the UCSA building, so it's nice and close on campus. Very affordable, it is 99% free. Some things may um, include uh, um, fee, but mostly uh, doctors and nurses and consultations are free for you. Um, student life, of course, affordability, we understand um, you tend to prioritise things as well. I'm guessing that a lot of people um, prioritised the toga party last night as opposed to coming here. And um, high quality and professional care. So the doctors and nurses, we also have physiotherapy and counsellors. They'll take very good care of you over there as well. Thank you. I'll pass you over to Janelle. Cheers, Kate. Um, as a staff member at UC, I also get to enjoy the services of the Rec Centre and Health Centre. Really worth going to, guys. The um, Rec Centre, it's a lovely stroll, especially on a sunny day. You get to walk down past the river. Um, 
you know, dawdle for five minutes until you get there. And one of my favourite things is they have boxing bags. So if you're in a really grumpy mood or you've just, um, someone's just upset you, head over to the rec centre, picture someone's face on the punching bag and just give it a good whack. It works for me. Okay. Right, I'm, um, so Janelle Blythe's my name, internal communications for the university. It's my job to make sure that you get key messages. Um, unfortunately for me, some of those key messages are normally the boring ones. So I'm going to skim through um, some important key messages for you. Smoke free, we're a smoke free campus. Okay, at the University of Canterbury. We um, do offer free support up until Easter though. So if you're looking to quit smoking, head to the health centre and you'll be able to get free assistance with quitting smoking. There are a couple of locations on campus where you can smoke. Uh, most relevant to you guys is the lawn area outside the foundry. Okay. Health and safety toolkit. Main message here is have a look on the website um, for any formal processes around health and safety. If you're looking up and you think someone something's about to fall on you, that's probably something that's classed as a hazard and you might want to report it. Okay. Head online to figure out how to report that or just report, report it to a staff member. And emergency management is quite important, um, especially nowadays with the um, aftershocks that could still be occurring. Main message for you guys is read notices in rooms. Um, have a look at your safety zone. So if you're in a certain room, just um, think to yourself, if there's an aftershock right now, what would I do? Um, in many cases, it might be just a matter of hopping under the desk, unless it's a really flimsy desk. Alrighty. So keep an eye out. Check out our emergency management website. Jared mentioned earlier an 0800 number for security. That is the number up there, 0800 823 637. Please do load that into your mobile phones. Um, just a lot easier in any emergency. Our security guys are on segways at good times, so they can get to you pretty quickly. They can pop you on their back and take you back home to safety. Alrighty. Okay, enjoy your time at UC. Main message um, here today is ask for help. It's really important. Don't be afraid to ask anyone, any staff member for help, and they'll do their best to head you in the right direction. Okay, cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Now I'd like to introduce um, Amy Wilson from IT. Um, so you'll all be um, end up, of course, using a lot of the IT services around here, especially UC Student Web. So that's certainly something to, to take account of. Hi folks, so as Jared just said, my name's Amy and I work in IT here at the university. So I'm just going to give you a very brief intro to some of the main resources you'll be using as a student. Uh, now I've just put up the very top of this slide, probably the most important thing to take away from this is your first point of contact for IT assistance is the ICT service desk. And their contact details are in the student services white booklet thing which hopefully you've grabbed a copy of or you'll grab one on the way out. Uh, some of the main things uh, available to you as students, so you've got your IT account obviously, which if you've gotten your card, you've already gotten your IT account as well. You'll have a student email address, which you should check on a regular basis, i.e. at least weekly, hopefully a couple more times than that. Online learning system, this will be learn, I'll talk about that in a minute. Internet access, wireless access, not necessarily the same thing. Computer workrooms, we've got a lot of workrooms around on campus, so if you don't own a laptop or a computer at home, we have facilities available to you. Or even if you do own a laptop or have a computer at home, we have facilities available to you. And some of these are 24 hours as well. So you can come in at 3 a.m. in the morning when you've forgotten to write that essay. Uh, we have printing and, photo <laughs> printing and copying facilities and, of course, just general IT assistance as well. So this should look vaguely familiar if you've got your card already. Your username is on your card. It's a three letter, two or three number code and it is yours whilst you are a student. It will not change. So make sure you know what that is. In your student email address format, again, all of this is online so you don't need to write this down. Internet access, as undergrads you receive a two gig internet allowance every month and if you exceed this, charges may be incurred. So just keep that in the back of your mind if you're going to get a little crazy watching YouTube videos that are not related to your schoolwork, you may find you get charged for some of them. And wireless access, if you've got a device here today, like say an iPhone or you brought your laptop with you and you have your IT account set up already, i.e. you've got your card, we can set you up out in the foyer today or from next week we'll be in level two of the central library so we can set you up there. 
Your IT account, it's kind of like a bank balance really. Log in and check out how your quotas are going, if you've got any charges on your account, um, why you think suddenly your internet quota's gone down, you can have a look on here. Printing and photocopying, again, more charges, sorry guys. So don't get too print happy. Learn, this is the big one for you. Learn is your online learning system. Now not every course uses Learn, your, your lecturer will let you know if you need to log in to Learn. And on here are going to be things like lecture notes, uh, assignments, so you'll receive and submit assignments through Learn. You'll do group discussions and group projects through here as well. And the other big thing that you'll access through Learn are your course readers. So these are supplemental texts. Uh, you won't all have course readers, you might have lab books and the like through here as well. And you can either read them online, you can print them off chapter by chapter or as one big in one big fell swoop, or you can print them via the copy centre and pick them up in the Shelley Common Room in a bound format, which is quite useful. So my last slide, just some more contact details. The ICT Service Desk, again, your one-stop shop. We've got a little table outside, so if you've got your card and you didn't set your password, come and see us, because you need to do that, otherwise you won't be getting very far next week. Um, and if you've got a wireless device you want to set up today, again, come and see us. We can get that sorted for you nice and early. And some physical locations, we've got an office over at the Education Library on the Dovedale campus, which I highly recommend checking out, even if you're not an education student. It's a really lovely campus, and often the facilities aren't used nearly enough, which means it's always computers free. And then I've got Czech website, because we've been all over the show. Up until the end of day today, our main ICT service desk is in the Crypt 2 in the Erskine building down in the basement. Uh, but from next week, we'll be back in level two of the central library. So just walk up the main stairs and head straight in. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Amy. Um, I'll just um, continue on from that just a little bit. Certainly in terms of getting a username and password, that's how you log into your UC Student Web. And if anyone's got any course clashes, that's where you can actually resolve them, a lot of them yourselves. By going onto UC Student Web, if you're fully enrolled, then there'll be a timetable and self-streaming option. So if you click onto that, down at the bottom, um, when you click on, say, the, this week or, say, next week when lectures start, you'll actually be able to see if there's any options to change maybe your stream. Um, maybe you don't want an 8am lecture, you actually prefer to have one a little bit later. So if there's space, then you can actually look at moving your lectures and your streams around. Um, there's also a lot of change that takes place um, throughout the university in the first couple of weeks. There's actually about 40,000 course changes that take place in the first couple of weeks of lectures. So students suddenly decide, actually I don't like that stream, um, I'd actually prefer to change degrees, those sorts of things. So if you do have course clashes and there's nothing available at this point in time to actually change into, just keep checking back because as I said there's a lot of changes that actually take place. Um, now I'd like to introduce um, Margaret from the library. Margaret. Oh, welcome everyone. I'm Margaret from the library and I'm here and the library staff are all here to help you when you have questions with your study or if you're looking for course material. So um, when you think about libraries, you probably think about books and computers, but we're about more than that. We're about information. So you can come and ask us when you're looking for any information for your courses. So of course, we do have books in the library. We've got textbooks. You'll find a lot of these are on either three-hour loan or three-day loan, and you just need to keep track of these if you've got these out of when they're due back. We also have fiction books that you can borrow, and movies, and music. And in total, we've got about a million and a half items on the shelves in the library. You can take out 25 things at a time. In addition to that, we've got about six million items that we subscribe to electronically. And you can access these 24-7 from either on campus or at home. So there are five libraries on campus and your Canterbury card gives you access to those libraries. There's the Education Library which is across the island fields, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Library, the Macmillan Brown Library which has the New Zealand and Pacific collections, the Law Library which has the Commerce collection, and the Main Library which is in the tallest building on campus and that's got the remainder of the collection. So if you want to get in touch with us, you can either come in and see us, you can phone us, we have a Facebook page, 
you can email us, or we have an online chat service called Ask Live. So um, you'll also find links to library services from your course modules on Learn. So I hope that you enjoy your studies, you have fun while you're here, and that your studies are successful. So do come in and see us if you've got any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Val and Frieda from the Learning Skills Centre. Actually, I've only got one. Oh, oh, just one, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And now just to move, move on. Brilliant. Okay, hi everybody. And I'm absolutely thrilled to see you now here this, um, after the toga party last night. Um, the Learning Skills Centre. Some of you will um, have been aware of a learning centre at secondary school and quite often associated with the library. But we find that quite a few students come in with a, a misapprehension about this was a place that they might have been um, advised to go to when they had perhaps struggling with their studies. And many of the students who arrive at university have done very well at high school and they say, oh, I don't need anything like that. I've always done extremely well. And the point we just want to make with the Learning Skills Centre is that you've stepped up a notch. Tertiary education, and particularly here at the university, is going to challenge you in different ways. There are going to be different types of assignments. They're going to require deep, critical thinking. And we are available for you to help you with your assignments excuse me, your assignments. Uh, you can see we're teachers of academic skills. And so there's a whole range of academic skills that um, are available and taught. Ones like uh, structuring your assignments. And we work with students um, right through from literally day one. And in fact, even uh, in some of the transition course ways, uh, courses coming into university. And step by step, right through with every college and uh, right across campus, uh, through to students who are postgraduates, through to the final stages of their PhDs. And so it is a free teaching service where there are qualified staff and we can help you write better assignments and our whole purpose is here is to make you, you know, able to succeed at university. Uh, when we, um, we say about checking out our website, uh, we have got if you think green, these are going to be, um, this is going to be the colour that you'll see associated with learning skills. We're based in what we call South Bank, which is just across the river at the Students' Association building. It's the very first building that um, you come to on the ground floor, this side of the pharmacy. In the foyer there, there are computers that you can use. There's free coffee. You can drop in. And the drop-in quick query times, 10 till 2, right through Monday to Friday. And this means if you've got your hands on an assignment, you look at it and you think, I really do not have any idea how to start here. You can drop in and a learning advisor can sit with you and just talk it through, um, check out your assignment, you know, requirements, etc. with you. Of course, once you've started writing, whether it's a report from science, whether you're doing a, a psych lab report, or whatever your assignment may be, you can bring a portion of it and we can work with you and suggest how it can be improved in its style, obviously grammar, a whole vast range of opportunities for you. We run uh, many courses. You'll see out, uh, if you go out to lunch straight after this, I'm going to be setting up the table. That's why I've got the green tablecloths over there and lots of different coloured flyers which cover many of the courses that are going to be on offer. There's going to be essay writing, report writing, there's, there's ones on critical thinking, time management. And if you think to what the careers um, advisor was saying to you, that of the 10 graduate attributes which were identified, three of the top ones were associated with not just your qualifications, but the skills and the grades. The oral communication skills. We do oral presentations and help you with, with that. There was, of course, the critical thinking and there were the quality of your academic assignments. And so we can make an appointment because not only do we have 
courses, seminars, workshops, quick queries. You can make uh, an appointment of up to 50 minutes to bring along an assignment and to have a learning advisor work side by side with you in a one-to-one -one tutorial consultation situation. So we work very, very closely with your lecturers. Next week when you go into your classes, you're going to find that your lecturer will um, more than likely uh, talk to you about the Learning Skills Centre. And we are also embedded in a large number of courses. So if you're on campus, how many are on the education campus? Anyone here? Just one or two. Uh, we also um, offer uh, sessions in the education library. So Monday afternoon and Tuesday morning, um, I offer uh, on call and also appointments. And I'll be running seminars either in the education library or actually embedded in um, some of the education courses. So the main message to check out uh, don't think that because you're an A student at secondary school that it's going to be plain sailing. It will certainly hold you in good stead, but there are skills that you need at the tertiary level. It's much better to check it out really early rather than wait until after Easter when you get your first assignment back and then feel disappointed with the grade. So check us out, Learning Skills Centre, Think Green and check out our website and these brochures are going to be on the table and also out at lunch on the lawn. So, welcome and all the best with your studies. Thank you, Freda. I, I can certainly um, recommend the Learning Skills Centre, especially if any of you are looking at doing um, certain degrees such as engineering, such as law, uh, speech and language therapy, social work, where it's, it's a selection process, of course, into your second year. So if, if it's based on your grade average or anything like that, anything that you know, we can help um, get those grades up just a little bit more um, you know, is, is going to make a huge difference, of course, in any of those selection criteria. Also, if you're ever looking at going on into postgraduate, you know, you might think at some stage you might want to look at doing honours, you might want to look at doing your master's sort of thing, and entry into those, of course, is based on your, on your grade point average as well, and you're sort of wanting it ways, how can I actually increase those, then the Learning Skills Centre is certainly something that I would, I would recommend. That's pretty much the end of our, our session. I'd like to thank you all for, for coming along. I would make one final um, point in that we also have a, an accommodation office on campus as well. So if you do have any concerns with accommodation options, you're wanting to, to ask about flatting options, um, maybe you've, um, you're in halls of residence and you want to ask queries about those, then please feel free to come along and talk to our accommodation office. We've got Andrea here um, who's from the office. And again, we're all based over in the Student Support Centre. Okay, so thank you very much for coming along. I hope you have um, a great day. You enjoy the, the rest of your time here and enjoy your time at the University of Canterbury. Thank you very much.